German farmers are braving the January weather to show the government that they are not willing to fill in the budget deficits that the government has created for themselves. It's not the farmers that created budget deficits. Now, the way that it works in Germany is that when they have a deficit, it's illegal. It's not like in the United States where the debt clock can just run up to our heart's content. Uh, so when the G German government found this deficit, they said, well, we need to plug it. Where are we going to do uh, that? We're going to reach into farmers tax credits. We're going to take it from the farmers. Uh, the farmers are saying, no, actually, we can't afford it. And we are not your low hanging fruit to just take from us. You see where I'm going there? Fruit farmers. Uh, so they announced today a week of action and Redacted showed up in person to see for ourselves. Clayton is freezing his butt off alongside the farmers to find out what they want and what the government is going to do about it. So see for yourself. I'm Clayton Morris in the middle of Berlin at the Brandenburg Gates, where last night around 5 p.m. there were no farmers here. There were no trucks here. There were no dump trucks. And this morning, hundreds upon hundreds of tractors arriving with one simple message. No farmers, no future for the future of Germany with skyrocketing taxes and fuel costs that have put them prohibitively out of business. Hello. Hello. What do you think about the rising rising fuel costs uh, and the rising costs of energy here in Germany? Yeah, we have the biggest, the highest, oh, we have the biggest, the highest price in energy, especially in electronic energy. Uh, especially in, Ger in Europe, I don't know if worldwide, but it's ridiculous. They shut down all the uh, nuclear plants in Germany last year, you know, because it would be too dangerous. And I wonder if this year we have enough energy to have a warm uh, flats and houses, you know. And, if, and I'm also preparing for a big blackout, you know, it could happen any time. So hearing from the farmers, landscapers, that enough is enough that the prices have gone up, they can't afford their way of life, these government leaders are driving them out of business, enough is enough. We, my company, we are landscapers. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, yeah, we are joining today, want to help, want to show flex, and uh, say enough is enough. These farmers say they're going to be here for the long haul. They've even brought their own wood-burning fireplaces so they can stay warm while they get their mes message out. It's, it's so cold that my my mouth is not even working right now. So you guys are gathered here around the fire. Yeah. What time did you guys get here? We came here around 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock 8 last night. Why did you come here? Well, we are, uh, we, we stand together for the farmers uh, of what the, uh, the government is doing to us, raising the prices taking all the money from us and then throwing it out to uh, other countries where it would be much better to use it for our infrastructure. So I've seen some other farmers say, you know, money being sent to Ukraine mm. and when money could be better spent here with our own farmers and helping yes. our own government. Yeah, yeah because I, I find it, very, it the most important people also here is all the farmers because without them, the whole infrastructure itself would collapse. So, <laughs> no money for war. Is that what you said? <laughs> for oil. No money for oil. war. Is that what you said? For war. For war. For war. No, yeah. mon no money for war. He just yelled. Sixty-five percent increases in the fuel to run their businesses, to put food on the table, to bring food to market. I saw one uh, one casket down the way that says uh, the that the train does not run through the supermarket. Uh, and meaning that they need the transportation. They need to be able to provide the transportation, the trucks, to bring food to market. And you can see they are in for the long haul, lighting up firewood, making sure that they are staying warm, bringing their toilets, bringing their sleep gear. Uh, they are going to be here for the long haul. 85% higher. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's not, uh, not okay. We take a million euro here and here and here and we work, work, work. We have no money. No? Okay. okay. So you hope today, that, do you want your government to be overthrown or do you want the regulations to be removed? We hope the government go away. You want the government to go away? We need a new government. 
Not my president, not my government. So you don't want this government? No. No? No. Do you want a new government? Yes, because our government at the moment, it's far too left. Interesting to hear from a lot of the protesters. They don't have any farmers in their family. They aren't farmers. They're simply here bringing their cars, bringing their trucks in a show of solidarity with the farmers. Do you have farmers in your family? Um, no. No? No. Why are you here today? For them. For them? For them? Yeah. A lot of the Western media has tried to portray these protesters as far-right extremists. Uh, behind me here, you can see the, the Associated Press is doing interviews here. The German media also doing interviews, of course. Uh, in the coverage over the past few days, they've been painting these uh, folks as extremists, far-right extremists, uh, similar to Trump supporters. And of course, the protesters and farmers I've spoken to have said that is ridiculous. We're not far-right, we are realists. We realize that our taxes have gone up, our prices for fuel have gone up. We can't run our business. We are not far-right extremists. It happens the same thing like always. They say, okay, the protesters are right wing. Politicians, uh, what they said the last days about the farmers is uh, possible. They, uh, yeah, uh, my English is not that good, but they were very mean to them. They said bad things about the farmers. They uh, treat them like animals when they are right wing. Right-wing extremists. That's right-wing extremists. Uh, that's a problem. Hello. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you so much. See, they're just handing out food. Thank you so much. What is that? That's uh, uh, was, Thank you so much. No, these farmers need it more than I do. But thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. That's that's the kind of people they are. Just handing out food, making sure that you're warm. Come please stand near our fire. As I walk around and talk to the farmers who tell me we are not far-right extremists. The media here in Germany has been painting these protesters as far-right MAGA extremists. The same way that Justin Trudeau's government in Canada painted the trucker convoy as far-right white supremacists. In fact, the truckers here are telling me they're just realists. They see their prices going up, their inability to put provide for their families, provide for their companies, their businesses are going under, their fuel costs are skyrocketing. Does that make them far-right extremists? No. This is their message. We are not far-right extremists, we are realists. From what we can see here, people are just trying to live, trying to survive, trying to have their next meal. But so you're not an extremist? <laughs> I'm not an extremist. I am more of a realist. I see what people uh, are struggling with because I also started from the bottom with my family and I've seen the struggles and what what's happening now is not no, uh, a normal uh, government anymore it's almost you could say like a dictatorship remarkable to think of these protests just a few meters away from where remnants of the Berlin Wall stand and of course 1987 Ronald Reagan stood right here and demanded that Gorbachev tear down this wall. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. So this is the scene from the middle of Berlin where the farmers and protesters tell me they're not going anywhere. They've got their fuel, they've got their wood to keep warm, they've got their food. They are not going anywhere until their government listens to them. This is a week of action which could continue for many, many weeks until they get their government to stand up and support them instead of sending money to foreign wars and sending money out of their country. I'm Clayton Morris for Redacted. All right, well, you see it for yourself. Uh, it looks freezing there. They have severe frost warnings, and they're still out there. Now, a couple things that Clayton pointed out was that these are peaceful protests, so no matter what the media will tell you about it, they're not blocking the ro uh, they're not blocking the normal flow of people's living. They're trying really hard to make sure that the city can still function while they are still able to be heard, uh, but leaving routes of traffic open. So uh, as the government continues to paint them as extremists or far right, I mean it's really too bad that they don't have 
a figure like Trump to pin them to, right? Or some kind of um, extremist, racist, misogynistic uh, label. Do they use the Go do ahead. They use the Nazi term over there as well, like they do here, because that's the term they would use here. Do they, um, would they no, no, well, so far to use it over there? That is a big word to be used in Germany. Um, yeah. So, you know, and I was talking to a friend because we were traveling in this region. Um, I do have to say, I just take a little bit personal privilege and say I'm so proud of my husband for going out there. You know, we didn't have a plan to do this. We were just wrapping up our travel over the weekend and we're like, this is happening. It's not far from where we are. We were all five of us, us and our two, three kids were in the airport and he's like, there's a flight to Berlin. I think I should just get on it. Um, and he just went. He didn't, he hadn't packed for it. He just took his backpack with his camera equipment and just left. And the three kids and I got home on our own because we felt like this is something we should see for ourselves. This is something that um, Clayton speaks a bit of German and it, it felt like it made sense, but it's so cold out there. And, uh, you know, he just decided to be there in solidarity with uh, these people. And I, you know, I'm just really proud. I feel like he filed a, a great piece and I'm excited well, and to it, have seen it. I, I wish America would take note because, like, I, I've been watching the rhetoric that's coming from Biden uh, the past, you know, week or so, and his whole strategy to win this next election is to just smear Trump and his supporters and do basically the same thing, is just paint everybody as far right, and that's become a, a way that they can discredit these people. So, they, we, like you said, they did it in Canada, now they're doing it over there, and these people have a real need. I mean, we've been talking about the energy crisis for over a year now, and these people are in the coldest time, like a, a, an unusual cold spell right now. Th like, we were talking about how many people die from cold. Yes. Th that's scary. Yes, I believe the, the, I don't have the statistic in front of me, but it's about seven times more people die from cold than uh, heat. So it's another thing the media just sort of ignores. And these record cold temperatures, especially in the Nordic regions, um, are com completely, you know, inconvenient truths, but it's happening. People are hurting. Uh, and so um, another thing that a friend in this region had told me that, you don't idle your car in Germany. You really will get like people will walk up to you and be like, you don't idle the car. That's bad for the environment. It's bad for, you know, it's emissions like you just don't do it. And so for them, to, for Germans to be sitting there idling their car, you know, it's a it's a major. Um, she also said that, uh, like in America, if you drive around and you give someone the middle finger, you know, we can sort of do that with impunity as Americans. You do not do that in Germany, like they, are, they have very strict roads, about, rules about what happens in the car. Um, she, they call it the stinka finger is the middle finger. Use that in a sentence this week. <laughs> uh, so they're very strict about it. And I, I, I don't know if you recall right before the break, we had Ralph Scholheimer on. He says, you know, the joke is that when Germans protest, the streets are cleaner after the protests than they were before. Uh, so this is this is serious movement. These people deserve to be heard. Let us know what you think of that. Were you gonna say something, David? No, I, I, I just wish that America would take note because like we haven't seen anything like this and, and this is the kind of stuff that it takes to get this change. But yeah. it's like, you know, right. where, where are they? So what will the government do now? Now, last week, the government has said they would re roll back the plan to remove these subsidies this year only, they still will go forward with it. But over the course of the next three years, the farmers are saying, nope, that's not what we're here for. We need you to hear us for real, make real changes to the budget. I mean, you look at the things that Germany has done to its people, as Ralph Scholheimer had said, uh, every politician, every political move seems to be put the German people last. And what they're saying is this does not work for us. Uh, we want affordable energy that increases our productivity as a country, creates prosperity for all. Stop closing down nuclear power plants and opening up coal plants. Give us affordable energy. Find out who sabotaged our pipeline and stop sending money for war. How about that? A simple prosperity pr plan for all. Uh, so way to go, those people who are showing the government what exactly they want from them. Um, and may they have great results. So we will stay on top of this story. I believe uh, Clayton is going to come back tomorrow, though, and he'll bring us more about what he saw. 
So uh, let us know what you think of that in the chat. Thank you so much for watching this segment here at Redacted. We are live every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of Redacted Rebels over at redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join the rebellion together right now by going to redacted.inc. We'll see you next time.